To be successful, you must be able to learn from your mistakes. But at least what I've noticed with really successful people is that not only do they learn from their own mistakes, but they also learn from other people's mistakes. And why this is better is because you don't have to go through the trial and tribulation of like many months of mistakes to learn from that mistake. You could just talk to the person or look at what they have done and you've learned the lesson and you just avoided months of work. And look, although I've been coding for a year and a bit and that's not a lot compared to the other developers in the space, um, I still think that learning from my mistakes after a year and a bit is pretty valuable. So what I'd like to do in this video is just walk through seven lessons that I've learned after a year of coding so that you don't have to make these mistakes and you could just like surpass me when it comes to learning from these issues. If you like the video, like the video and let's get into it. So the first main lesson I've learned after a year is to avoid frameworks. Like many web developers, I learned JavaScript in like three months and I thought that I was ready. But I was kept being told that I had to learn React because React was gonna get me hired. It, it would be used in all my applications. So I thought to myself, screw JavaScript after three months, let me get started in React. However, jumping into a framework that fast without learning the fundamentals of a programming language and the syntax of a programming language really set me back as a developer because it made me rely on a framework to do the things for me. For example, I wanted to be a full stack developer and in React or Next.js, you actually have to write in like vanilla JavaScript sometimes, you know, making APIs and functions. No one told me that. I thought that I didn't, didn't need JavaScript anymore. So when I went to React, um, it made me forget about the core fundamentals of JavaScript. And although I, I obviously gained it back, it sent me back three months because I neglected my skills in JavaScript. And so how you can fix this, and we'll have like the top part being like the mistake and the bottom being the fixes, is to, and this is gonna be funny, is to stay vanilla. By this I mean avoid frameworks for like four months of your programming journey. Stick to the basics of a programming language. If it's Python, it's Python. If it's C, it's C. If it's JavaScript, it's vanilla JavaScript. Stay with that, I promise you. I know you wanna rush into React or Next.js, but in the long term, you will see much better progress and you'll thank yourself forever if you understand how the core JavaScript works than relying on React. These developers today, they're freaking frameworkers. It's so sad to see because they don't really know how to code. They rely on a framework and you don't wanna be like that. So the next lesson after a year of coding is to code every day. And I know this is kind of obvious to a lot of people, but for me, I used to code three days a week, two hours each days. And in my mind, I thought it was like regular school where I could just study a couple of times per week. And it couldn't be further from the truth. When it comes to learning new things like a new language or something like programming, which is a skill, scientifically speaking, you're better off learning every single day for like 30 minutes a day compared to three days a week for two hours a day. And although like, I guess they're approximately the same amount of time. By doing something consistently every day, it just becomes a part of you. And look, as soon as I went to coding every day, so be an everyday coder, it's like coding becomes a part of your life and it just becomes a lot easier to do. I used to do like, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. When it was Friday and Saturday, when it came back to going to like Monday to code again, I didn't remember what I did on Friday. So it really messed with how much progress I was making. So code every day, it's a huge, huge advantage compared to other people. And I think it's something that a lot of us neglect, especially myself. And that actually leads us to the third lesson. And it is to look at other people's code. And look, man, I come from the background of law, personal training, and the food industry. And let's just say those industries are not very uh, community oriented. And when I joined the programming space, I thought in that same way. I didn't need anyone else to help me. I didn't have to share my code for anyone else to see. And someone was gonna copy my code, so why share it? And I was like six months into my programming journey, and I was like really stuck on a bug, like really stuck on a bug. And at that time I was like using Stack Overflow and stuff like that. But I, I searched up my problem and I found a guy that literally did the exact same thing as me. Like he solved the bug, he posted it online, and he was just giving it out for free. And it made me think, this is what programming is. It's a community of people that are just sharing their progress and I should be doing the same. And so if you're in the programming space, and I know this is a really, really hard for a lot of us to do, but this is gonna sound bad, but cheat and steal. And I don't mean this in like a bad way, I'm just saying it cause it's like kind of, you'll see what I mean. Um, if you're building something or you're stuck on a bug, look it up and steal their answers. Obviously, you don't want to copy everything exactly, especially if it's like a GitHub repository, but if they posted it onto like Stack Overflow 
see that, look at what they did, fix it to, to how it adjusts to your application and use it. There's so many videos and generally speaking, if you're trying to work on a feature, someone else has already done that feature. So why not see how they did it, see how they implemented it into their own software and then take that principles and learn from their mistakes like you're doing right now and put it into your app. It's gonna save you so much time. It's such a huge time saver and I just love this. Now the fourth lesson after a year of coding is to be patient and forgiving. This one's kind of, uh, you know, cringe, advice i guess you could say but look when learning code it's really easy to fall into a trap of thinking that you're not making progress like the first i guess five months i didn't really see a big difference from day one and day whatever five months is like 120 i don't know and in that when not when you're not seeing any progress it's so easy to go harder on yourself and to ridicule yourself and to call yourself dumb but i just want you to realize real quick is that it's completely normal to struggle. And so in this lesson, right, don't be like me and think that you're going to be a success right away or that you will learn right away or that you'll make the next billion dollar company, but rather expect to fail, expect to fail in learning code, expect to fail in making progress, expect to fail your first business, expect these things. Because when you set the expectation that it's going to happen eventually, I know it's hard for you to think that because you want to think in like a successful way, but this sets you up not to be delusional firstly and it allows you to counteract that failure with more work when you do fail and it will happen in some way okay some people it's more than others forgive yourself i have failed so many freaking times i have failed three businesses and it's just a lesson it's just a lesson you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it into some other aspect of your life but don't be like me and and sit in your sorrow i guess you could say um learn from your failure and forgive yourself that's all be patient with your progress and forgive yourself and so the sixth i guess we're well, not fifth lesson uh after a year of coding is that you will always feel stuck i'm gonna just write stuck because i don't want to write all that and this one actually came to me because like, look think of it okay when you just started coding and you look at some guy like a year into coding like if you're like brand new right now and you're looking at me a lot of you think that i don't run into issues i don't struggle and i don't fail right you probably think that because someone's ahead of you i think of that about senior developers senior developers think that about the top developer whatever it may be however that expectation and that outlook on programming and skills as a whole is completely wrong rather you should think that you will always be an imposter and i think i think this is fine like i'm i still feel like an imposter talking to other developers i don't know why like it's just I don't know, everyone expects it. The people I've talked to in the coding space and the content creation space also think this. And I think a part of me, because I've thought about this for a while, thinks that this is kind of put into the human brain where to make progress in something, we have to feel anxious about it. Like if we're content, we wouldn't want to work on something. And with coding, it's something that we need to make progress in because it's an ever evolving field. And if we're content, we will not make the progress. And by feeling like we're an imposter, by having this anxiety, it just allows us to do more work. I think that's the theory. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just a programmer, but I think that's my theory on it. And so for you, okay, expect again to feel like an imposter and just know that this feeling will always be there. So get used to it. But the sixth lesson is to not worry about tech stack. The amount of fucking times people have asked me what tech stack I use, which is the best tech stack? Should I use this tech stack? And even worse, the people that are debating what the best tech stack or UI library or computer is for programming is just such a, it, it hurts me. Because who's debating this, right? Who's debating these issues? It's brand new developers. And why does it matter what these brand new developers are picking? Who, like, if you wanna be a web developer, sure. You, you kinda like, you have to specifically pick a language that fits a web developer. You don't wanna learn Python if you want to be a web developer that just does not how it, it's not how it goes but where the issue lies is that people are fighting over if larvel is better than nextjs and there's like a full on like war or debate going on about which is better and people spend months thinking about which tech stack to use rather okay what you want to do is not to be like me and spend a month or two months worrying about tech stack and which tech stack to use just pick a tech stack that you like literally Forget about what the debates are. Forget about what people are saying. Find something that you freaking love. Get really good at it and stick to it. I'm telling you, I can make a lot of money right now sponsoring languages and UI libraries because I've had offers to, to be sponsored from companies. But I just don't care. I generally don't care what the language is. If you enjoy it, 
that's you. And I think living by this for all aspects of programming, whether it be your computer, UI library, hosting service, whatever it may be, I have my opinions, you have your opinions. Pick what you like and stick to it. This will save you so much headache and you focus on what you actually need to focus on, which, which is coding and building shit rather than freaking stupid framework. And finally, the final lesson after a year of coding is to, to contribute to open source. And now I talked about this in, uh, where is it? Look at others code, but I think this deserves its own uh, section because open source is the best part of programming. My resistance to open source, I talked about it earlier, but I didn't want to do it. I just thought that open source was firstly worse than private code. I thought that people will steal my code and that people would judge me for my code. But man, open source does so much for you. It lets you improve as a programmer because you are judged. Obviously you're judged. It lets you write better code for other people because you're writing code for a company or for an open source project. And finally, it just lets you collaborate with other people. And the amount of reward you'll get from learning, from building something cool and the stuff you can put on your resume, I think is just unmatched compared to any other field in programming. And look, I think we're in a bit of a time crunch. So if you wanna learn more about contributing to open source and how it's both changed my life and how you can contribute to open source, then I will leave the open source video somewhere on the screen. I don't know if it's like here or here. But yeah, if you like the video, like the video, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.